फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर् चानल ओम साई भोजनपल So we are doing the chapter bond valuation. We'll try to complete substantially the chapter in today's class. Next class we'll start with the next chapter dividend policy. From the chapter onwards, for another month's time, we'll be dealing with the equity shares. Over three chapters, namely dividend policy. equity valuation and portfolio management all the three chapters we predominantly discuss about the equity shares so now let us summarize what is done in the bond till now before i proceed further today we'll try to complete the convertible bonds three, that is three or four more sums are pending no new great concept is going to be discussed already introduction was over in the previous class we'll complete the convertible bonds we will do bond convexity we'll also do two miscellaneous problem one is value dissection another is valuation of share bonds etc the last sum will go into the equity valuation chapter this is all the areas we'll try to cover in today's class incidentally i will also make you understand how the volatility is calculated a molecule theorem showing the features of a bond instrument also will be discussed all this we'll try to complete in today's class if not we'll complete a portion in the next class and stop with the dividend policies we saw that companies required finance to invest in assets the assets investor generates return the return generated should be shared by the finance providers some people ask for a fixed return some ask for a variable return those ask for a fixed return are called as debt and those ask for a variable return are called as equity so the debt instruments are called as fixed income securities in which bonds are the traded debt in the stock exchanges bonds are very similar to debentures except that debenture may be supported by a debenture trust deed there are four types of bonds we discuss the plain bond annuity bond perpetual bond and zero coupon bond plain bond pays coupon for n years redeems in the nth year annuity bond pays installment every year for n years perpetual bond pays only coupon but does not pay redemption zero coupon bond pays only the maturity but does not pay the coupons for all the four bond types we discuss how to calculate what value how to calculate ytm the duration and volatility value of all the four bonds is the present value of their future cash flows discount at the required rate of return of the valuer value influenced by two things the cash flows that is agreed to be given by the instrument and the certainty of that particular cash flow represented by the discount rate the ytm of a bond is the yield the bond holder gets provided he holds a bond till maturity this ytm for a plain bond is calculated in three ways formula 1 interest after tax plus amortization divided by average price interest after tax plus amortization divided by weighted average price 0.6 into s plus 0.4 into m is a denominator or is the irr of the bond cash flows next is the annuity bonds where we found out the irr of the annuity cash flows discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow into annuity factor we know the discounted cash flow as a bond price we know the cash flow as annuities we find out the annuity factor known the annuity factor for a given number of years we search for the interest rate from the table third is a perpetual bond where ytm is equal to coupon divided by bond price zero coupon bond ytm found out using the formula future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r power m where we know the future value as the maturity value of the zero coupon bond present value is the 
that is the bond price and we have to find out r given the n number of years then we discuss about the duration duration can be found out in two ways for a plain bond take the bond cash flows discount the bond cash flows using ytm the discounted cash flow total will be price the discounted cash flow by price for every year find out the proportion multiply the proportion with the years i'll be getting the duration other way to find out is using the formula formula for duration is 1 plus y by y minus 1 plus y plus t into c minus y divided by c into 1 plus y power t minus 1 plus y then the duration for an annuity bond also will be in the same method only except that formula changes to 1 plus y by y minus t by 1 plus y power t minus 1 for a perpetual a so plus one sorry for a perpetual bond it is a one plus y divided by y is a duration for a zero coupon bond duration is its maturity then we discuss about the concept of volatility volatility of a bond is nothing but how much the bond price changes for every percent change in yield to maturity a volatility of two percent means when the ytm changes by one person the bond price inversely conversely changes by two percent is the meaning then we discuss about the next issue realize yield to maturity ytm is not the bond gives its bond holder realize ytm is not the bond holder ultimately yes what he ultimately earns also depends on what he does with the money obtained from the bond instrument how he is able to reinvest back is the issue if the reinvestment rate is more than ytm realize ytm will be more than ytm if the reinvestment rate is less than ytm realize ytm will be less than ytm reinvestment rate is equal to ytm realize ytm is equal to yield to maturity then we saw in bond immunization that if you want to protect your realized yield, you should not invest in a bond having a duration or the, no, not bond having a life of your time horizon, but invest a bond having the duration of its time horizon, which we discussed regarding the offsetting of reinvestment income versus capital gain or capital loss. Once that was discussed, then I think we discuss about forward rates. Forward rate for a nth year means suppose I have three bonds of the same institution a government of India one year bond a government of India two year bonds and government of India three year bonds one year bond may be trading at 9.29 percent per annum yield to maturity two year bond may be trading at 10.87 percent per annum yield to maturity a three year bond may be trading at 10.91 percent per annum yield to maturity we cannot say that for a second year bond 10.87 percent say ytm no in that case don't say first year 10.87 then second year 10.87 because first year we know it to be 9.27 what is the second year yield if you want to calculate that is called as the forward rates forward rates we saw how to calculate for a plain bond how to calculate for a zero coupon bond zero coupon bond can be easily calculated using bootstrap method the zero coupon bonds yield to maturity we call as zero rates this is what has been discussed in the yes a last class i think we also discuss about the bond refunding decisions in that case a company when i issue the bond in the intention itself they may have a clause saying that company can anytime call back the bond if it requires but at a certain premium they will be giving it in that case when the overall interest rate drops it is better for the company to buy back the bond having a higher coupon and reissue a bond having a lower coupon for them to save their cost of capital in that case we also saw how to find out whether the decision should be made or not whether the old bond should be replaced with new bond we saw how the decision should be made in the previous class then we discuss about convertible bonds above that only we are now discussing yeah investor has got three options name the three options you can invest in bonds you can invest in shares or you can invest in convertible security tell me or convertible bonds what is the advantage of investing in a bond the cash flow is certain but the disadvantage is he cannot share in the prosperity of the company advantage of investing in share is what can share in the prosperity of the company but disadvantage is the cash flows are uncertain
convertible bond, you can buy the bond when the company prospers in converting into equity shares. That is the bond holder has got a right to convert the convertible bond into shares at any time he wants. Are you following not? This bond gives him the benefit of shares as well as what? Bonds also. That is why out of the three instruments which will be trading at a higher price, convertible bond will always be trading at a higher price. Convertible bond has got a premium for the conversion which the other two doesn't have. So here we discuss one or two concepts. Now just to have a flow, I'll quickly summarize the calculation made in question number 24. I think for which we did the calculation as well as the elaborate notes, right or not? Once I summarize that, quickly let us do the remaining problems, okay? In question number 24, tell me, there was a convertible bond having a trace value, how much a base? 250 rupees. Coupon rate is 12 plus. Answer me, coupon rate for the convertible bond will be same as a coupon rate for a normal bond or less than that? Less than that. Because they are given option to convert or not. So the coupon may be less. And what are the number of shares that is underlying in that bond? 20 shares. And what is the market price? 12 rupees. Straight bond cost 235. Convertible bond trading at 265. This is all the details given. Yes or no? Now, stock value of the bond. Tell me, how many shares a bond represents? 20 shares. Each share is what? 12. If this bond is converted into shares today, I am getting shares worth how much rupees? 240. This is what I call as the stock value of the bond or the conversion value of the bond. Everybody, yes or no? Now, next is conversion premium. If you buy the shares straight away today, how much would I pay to buy 20 shares? 240. But when I buy the bond, convertible bond, through which I want to buy the share, now how much I have to pay? 265. Understand that buying a convertible bond is as good as buying a share only. I am buying a share which is giving me a coupon as long as I want and which can give me a dividend when I convert into equity shares. Are you following not? So, the 20 shares, if I buy through the convertible bond route, I have to pay 265. If I buy as a share as it is, I have to pay 240. What is the extra 25 premium I pay for the conversion option which I am having? Right or not? It is called as conversion premium. Downside risk. Now I buy 265, I pay 265 rupees and buy a convertible bond. It's on a, suppose the share attached to that bond becomes worthless. The company is performing very bad. The share is now trading in the market at 0 rupees. Share becomes what? Worthless. If you buy an equity share, your wealth is 0. I pay 240 rupees, buy an equity share and the share becomes worthless. What is my wealth? Zero. But if you buy a convertible bond and the share underlying in that bond becomes worthless, what is the value? Straight bond. That means that 265 will never drop to zero. Will drop to how much rupees? 235. So the downside risk maximum is how much here? 30 rupees. You want to express in percentage, it is 30 divided by 265. Gives you the downside risk in percentage. Everybody respond yes or no. And last is conversion parity, price of the stock. 265 rupees I paid to buy how many shares? 20 shares. So the parity price is 265 divided by 20. Gives you some number. I think 13.25. Everybody, are you comfortable or not? Now, this is an 8 mass question in the examination. All these problems, if you understand the sense, it becomes very, very easy and simple to answer. Can I proceed or not? No. Let us do few more sums in this convertible bond and then go for the other issues. Now let us quickly do it. Okay. Now take question number. Twenty-five. Is my number right? Question number twenty-five. Yeah? Take question number twenty-five. Please. Okay. Now. This is also another examination problem for 4 marks. This problem is asked for 4 marks. I think 2 attempts back this question has been asked. New Chem Corporation. Good morning friends. Good morning, Do you know I was speaking now so you should not be dreaming. Can we start or not? Yes, Have you all woken up? Newcom Corporation, this question over, eh? Okay. Newcom Corporation has issued. Now, on that day, you are in a hurry to leave, na? So, whether I just add a confusion with a completer or not. Can I proceed? Now, now, once again, class is up to what time? 
that you remember. Okay, now. If you have watch, put in the pocket. Don't look at the watch every now and then. Can I proceed? Now. Newcom Corporation has issued fully convertible 10% debenture at rupees 10,000 face value. Convertible into 20 equity shares. Current market price of the debenture is 10,800. Whereas the current market price of equity share is 480. You are required to calculate conversion premium and conversion value. Okay. Now, one minute answer. Okay. It is an examination problem. We should know what is conversion premium, what is conversion value. That's all to answer this particular question. Okay. Now tell me, this convertible bond is now selling in the stock market at how much rupees? 10,800. Trading at 10,800. When I buy the bond with 10,800, I am literally buying a bond having how many shares underlying it? 20 shares. I am buying a bond having a 20 shares as an underlying asset. Every share today is what? How much in stock market? 480 rupees. Now, the first question is conversion value. What are the other meaning for conversion value? Stock value of the bond. If the bond is converted into share today itself, how much what shares I will be getting is what we call as a conversion value. Can I proceed? Write on first. Part B. I will answer part B. Then only I can answer part A. Okay, right? Part B. Question number 25. Part B. Conversion value. Part B, conversion value, unline that. Conversion value means stock value of the bond. Conversion value means stock value of the bond. Conversion value means stock value of the bond. Stock value of the bond is equal to st stock value of the bond is equal to number of shares into MPS market price per share number of shares into market price per share which is equal to 20 shares into 20 shares into what is market price per share? 480. 20 shares into 480 is equal to rupees 9600. Is equal to rupees 9600. What is this 9600? If I exercise that option to convert today itself, so I'll be getting how much shares? 9600 worth the shares. Are you all following or not? No. Next. Part A or part B? Part A. Conversion premium. Conversion premium. We already discussed in the previous summer. No? What is conversion premium? Convertible bond value minus conversion value. Conversion premium is equal to conversion premium is equal to convertible bond value minus conversion value. Conversion premium is equal to convertible bond value minus conversion value. Convertible bond value minus conversion value, which is equal to number substitution. What minus what? 10,800 minus 9,600. 10,800 minus 9,600. Is it called how much base? 1,200. Conversion premium is equal to 1,200. 1,200. That's all. Everybody fine or not? Tell me what is the meaning of this 1,200? If I buy the 20 shares as share itself, I will be getting, I have to pay how much base? 9,600. If I buy the share through a bond route, I have to pay how much base? 10,800. I am paying how much extra for this conversion option? 1,200. Why I pay is, now the stock may be a low dividend paying stock. I will be getting a certain coupon. Whenever I want, I can go for the higher dividend. The choice or that benefit the company is giving me or not. For that only I pay the 1200 rupees extra. It is to cover or insure me against the uncertainty that is attached to your direct share purchase. Are you following what I am saying? It is like an insurance premium. Can I proceed? Now. With this question number 25 has been completed. Let's take the next question. Question number 26. Take question number 26. Okay. 
Shall I proceed? The following data is one of the RTP question. Mark it as important because all terms in convertible bond is covered through this particular sum. Okay. The following data is related to 8.5 percent fully convertible into equity shares debentures issued by JAC Limited at rupees 1000. That is rupees. The symbol was not the it is rupees 1000. Okay. Market price of the debenture 900 rupees. Conversion ratio 30. Straight value of debenture 700 rupees. Market price of the equity share on the date of conversion 25. Expected dividend per share 1. You are required to calculate conversion value of debentures, market conversion price, conversion premium per share, ratio of conversion premium, premium over straight value of debenture, favorable income differential per share, premium payback period. This is all the question which has been asked. One small mistake is there in question that you strike it off. Market price of the equity share. That's all. Other thing you just strike it off. It is illogical. Okay. So market price of the equity share today. At the date of conversion does not hold good because every day they will be able to convert it. So today will be the date of conversion is the meaning of that. You can strike it off. Market price of the equity share. That is more than sufficient. I particularly included just to make you understand that. Like that no need to get confused. Strike it off. It is something wrong to say that way. Can I be sure or not? No. These are all the details and questions which have been asked. Can we start answering the question one by one or not? No. So here you will do it. I will assist you in doing the calculations. Wherever explanation required, I will be doing it. All one line answers. Can I proceed? I don't first. Have you all settled down? Huh? Yes, Question number 26, part A. Question number 26, part A. Question 26, part A. Conversion value, part A, conversion value, can I proceed and line that, what is conversion value, so another name, stock value, right on, conversion value is equal to, conversion value is equal to number of shares into market price per share. Conversion value is equal to number of shares into market price per share. Which is equal to, when I buy this convertible bond today, I get the right to convert it into how many shares? Please tell me, 30 shares. Conversion ratio, na, every bond require converts into how many shares? That's the meaning. 30 shares into, 30 shares into, what is the market price per share? 25 rupees. 30 shares into 25 rupees. I hope you are all understanding and reading it or not. How much rupees? 750. 30 shares into 25 rupees is equal to 750. Is equal to 750. Part B. Market conversion price. Market conversion price. Market conversion price. Unline that. This is another name for conversion parity price. We had calculated conversion parity price or not? Yes. In which sum? Previous sum. Or the second previous sum or not? Write down. Market conversion price is market conversion price is another name for market conversion price is another name for conversion parity price. Market conversion price is another name for conversion parity price. Is another name for conversion parity price. Conversion parity price is equal to conversion parity price is equal to convertible bond price divided by conversion parity price is equal to 
convertible bond price divided by number of shares. Convertible bond price divided by number of shares, which is equal to. Now, tell me, how much I pay to buy this convertible bond? Please tell me the number here, 900. 900 divided by, every bond is having how many shares inside it? 30 shares. 900 divided by 30 shares. Is equal to how much it is? 30 rupees. Is equal to rupees 30. Is equal to rupees 30. Now, see, suppose I want to buy a share directly. I want to buy the share directly. In which market? Stock market, share segment. Okay, tell me how much should I pay to buy it? 25 rupees. Suppose I want to buy the same share with the cushion of having it as what? A convertible bond. In that case, how to pay how much per share? 30 rupees. That means 5 rupees I pay as what? Premium per share. For what option? Conversion option. Respond. Yes or no? Write down. Next. Part B or part C? Part C. Conversion premium per share. Part C. Conversion premium per share. Conversion premium per share. Write down. Conversion premium per share is equal to. Conversion premium per share is equal to. 30 minus 25. Conversion premium per share is equal to 30 minus 25. If you want to put as a formula, it is nothing but what? Conversion parity price minus share price. That's the meaning. Conversion premium per share is equal to 30 minus 25. How much per share? 5 per share. Is equal to 5 per share. Why I pay this 5 rupees? To insure me against uncertain dividend and guarantee me a certain coupon as long as I want it. Everybody, are you following or not? No. This is conversion premium price. Can I proceed? Next. Part, do, part C or D? D. Ratio of conversion premium. Part D, ratio of conversion premium. Part D, ratio of conversion premium. Online that. Tell me, how much rupees I pay as conversion premium for the share? 5 rupees. If I buy the share, how much I have to pay? 25 rupees. For the 25 rupees share, I pay how much premium? 5 rupees premium. 5 by 25 is what? The percentage of premium. Respond. Are you following or not? Write down. Next. Ratio of conversion premium is equal to... Ratio of conversion premium is equal to, ratio of conversion premium is equal to, conversion premium per share divided by MPS. Ratio of conversion premium is equal to, conversion premium per share divided by MPS. Conversion premium per share divided by market price per share. Which is equal to all the conversion premium? 5 rupees divided by 25. In a 25 rupees share only I pay 5 rupees extra. So 5 rupees divided by 25. Is equal to how much percent? 20%. Conversion premium per share is equal to 20%. Respond. Are you following or not? No. Next. E. Part D or E? E. Premium over straight bond value. Write down. Premium over straight bond value. Premium over straight bond value. It's very simple. Premium over straight bond value. Now, if I buy a convertible bond, how much should I pay for that bond? 900. If I buy a straight bond, how much should I pay? 700. For the premium over straight bond? 200. Write down. Premium is equal to, premium is equal to convertible bond value minus premium is equal to Convertible bond value minus straight bond value. Premium is equal to convertible bond value minus straight bond value. Convertible bond value minus straight bond value. Which is equal to tell me what minus what? 900 minus 700. 900 minus 700. Is it how much rupees? 200 rupees. Can you tell me what is the another name for this 200 rupees? Downside risk. Good morning. What is the 200 rupees? Downside risk. Suppose the convertible bond I buy at 900 rupees. 
the share becomes worthless. Will the bond value become zero one? No. It still will be having what? Straight bond value. How much rupees? 700 rupees. So the maximum downside is how much rupees? 200. Right on. This is also referred to as. This is also referred to as. This is also referred to as what? Downside risk. This is also referred to as downside risk. This is also referred to as downside risk also referred to as downside risk. Everybody can I pose it up? Now, next is favorable income differential per share. Point F. Right path F. Favorable income differential per share. Favorable income differential per share. Favorable income differential per share. Okay. Now, see, I buy a convertible bond, the bond gives me how much coupon? 8.5%. Look at the question here, yeah? yes or no? And the coupon is for face value or market price? Face value. They pay the coupon how much face value? 1000. Okay, now, right, coupon is equal to, sorry, 8.5% now, 8.5% into 1000. Coupon is equal to 8.5 percent into 1000. Tell me how much rupees is coupon? 85. Coupon is rupees 85. This 80 that is when I buy a convertible bond paying 900 rupees, I will get how much rupees coupon? 85 rupees. This 85 rupees is a coupon received for 30 shares. Yes, because every convertible person only shares here 30 shares. So I can write coupon per share. Coupon per share is 85 divided by 30. 85 divided by 30. What is 85 divided by 30? Tell me the number. 2.8. Okay, 2.833. Coupon per share is equal to 2.833. Now, tell me what is the dividend per share? 1 rupee. Dividend per share is rupee 1. Dividend per share is rupees 1. Everybody following or not? Now, listen here. Had I paid money to buy the share, then I will be getting from the company dividend or coupon? Dividend. How much rupees? 1 rupee. But since I paid the money not to buy a share, but to buy what? Convertible bond. I am getting how much coupon? 2.833. By holding a convertible bond or not by holding what? Equity share. I am having a favorable income difference or not? How much favorable income difference here? 1.833. For this 1.833 income difference only, I pay the 5 rupees extra premium. Are you following or not? Everybody following or not? Now, suppose I start to see that company is now declaring share around 4 rupees or 5 rupees. What I will immediately do? I will convert it into the equity shares. That is, uh, when you become certain that the company has stabilized, the new project has taken off, the returns are good. In that case, what I will do, I will convert this particular bond into equity shares. Everybody, are you following or not? Now, so write down. If, say, I think you are all writing along with me. Huh? Yes, sir. Should, should you copy or finish copying? Huh? Copy. I think you are copying along with me or not? Write down. If. The investor had purchased equity share if the investor had purchased the equity share he would have received a dividend of if the investor has purchased the equity share he would have received a dividend of rupee 1 he would have received a dividend of rupee 1 he would have received a dividend of rupee 1. But, by purchasing convertible bond, but by purchasing convertible bond, in bracket, having 30 shares underlying it, by purchasing a convertible bond, in bracket right, having 30 shares underlying it, having 30 shares underlying it, bracket close, he is able to receive, 
he is able to receive a coupon per share of he is able to receive a coupon per share of 2.833 he is able to receive a coupon per share of 2.833 thus convertible bond gives thus convertible bond gives a favorable income difference of thus convertible bond gives a favorable income difference of a favorable income difference of how much per share 1.833 per share gives a favorable income difference of 1.833 per share bracket how i got it bracket right 2.833 minus 1 2.833 minus 1. 2.833 minus 1. Bracket close. I think you are following or not? No. Next, last point. What is Pot G pay premium payback period? Right? Pot G premium payback period. Premium payback period. Now, tell me, how much premium I paid per share? 5 rupees. You know, at 25 rupees shares, I purchase how much rupees? 30 rupees by going to the convertible bond route. Yes or no? Now, why I pay this 5 rupees extra? Because for this 1.833 today, respond, are you following or not? Now, if this continues, it is 5 divided by what? 1.833. Tell me, what is the premium payback period? 5 by 1.833. Is equal to how many years? 2.7. 73 years. In other words, if this income difference can say, can say continues how many years? 2.73 years. Without time value of money, I am saying, I will be able to recover my premium, extra premium paid in that particular period. Are you following what I am saying? 5 rupees I paid extra or not? That 5 rupees extra which I pay can be recovered back in how many years? 2.73 years. Provide add my share dividend is going to be 1 rupee for the next 2 years. Everybody falling not. That nobody can guarantee because it is always a fluctuation amount. That is why in options, because the share price is uncertain or not, then how we can identify the premium as 5 rupees and so on. We will discuss in options there are various models for finding out like Black Scholes model, risk neutralization, etc. Understand simply that assuming that the dividend remains constant for the remaining 2 years, I will be able to recover the premium paid in 2.73 years. Are you following or not? Write down next step. Premium payback period is equal to 5 rupees divided by 1.833. Premium payback period is equal to 5 rupees divided by 1.833 is equal to 2.73 years. Is equal to 2.73 years. Is equal to 2.73 years. Okay, everybody, are you comfortable or not? Now, with this, we complete this particular. Sum on question number 26. These three sums 24, 25, 26 are standard convertible bond problems. Can we move to the next question or not? No. Please take question number 23. Take question number 23. A study material problem but a good sum in this convertible bond area please ten percent convertible loan stock of Agarkar limited is quoted at 142 rupees per hundred nominal reading the question the earliest date for conversion is 4 years time at the rate of 30 ordinary shares per 100 nominal loan stock. The share price is currently 4.15. Annual interest on stock is just being paid. Required is the average, is, uh, what is the average annual growth rate in the share price that is required for the stockholders? To achieve an overall rate of return of 12% a year 
compounded over next four years, including the proceeds of conversion. What is the implicit conversion premium on stock? These are the questions that has been asked. I will just give you a few minutes time. Read the question before I start with the solution. Please go through the question quickly. Shall we start or not? Now, see, in the market, the instrument being traded is what? Solupa. In the market, the instrument trade is what? Convertible bond. It is now trading at a market price of how much rupees? 142. This bond is having how many more years life? Four more. That is four more years life. At the end of the fourth year, it is going to get its converter into how many shares? 30 shares. And what is the price of the share today? 4.15. The convertible bond pays how much percent coupon? 10 percent coupon. Are all the details given? Can I start or not? No. The question is, what should be the growth in share price so that this bondholder over the four years period will earn a return that means a YTM a how much percent 12 percent <coughs> what should be the growth in share price so that the bond holder will earn a YTM how much percent 12 percent on this bond transaction is a question are you following or not a question Brunida. if not follow my solution then we we'll be understanding the question much more better okay listen here all of you participate Suppose you buy the convertible bond today. How much you invest to buy that bond? 142. Say you keep it for 4 years. Only when you hold till maturity, one will be able to calculate what? YTM. Don't say, sir, I can any time convert. Then the question may not be applicable. I have to hold till how many years? 4 years. For me to calculate the YTM. Are you fine or not? No. You as a bond holder, invested 142 rupees and you are holding the bond for how many years? 4 years. And you want to have a YTM how much percent? 12%. Now the question is, what should be the growth in share price for you to achieve the YTM of 12%? Okay, listen here. Target redemption value for a YTM of 12%. See, I want a YTM of 12% year cash flow. You buy the convertible bond for next to 4 years, you will be getting the coupon or not? How much coupon you are going to get? It is going to be 100 face value into 10 percent. I get 10 rupees coupon. At the end of fourth year, say this is a convertible bond, I will be getting a maturity value, right or not? So, I am going to get how many shares? 30 shares. Each share worth how much rupees? Wrong. 4.15 is today's price, yeah. It is actually the price at the end of the year 4. Are you following? Class A, are you all following or not? Now, please be on track, be agile here. Yeah. Don't have a laid back approach. Can you proceed it now? Okay. Those are awake, raise your hand. Really awake or not? Now, listening uh, now. Subject device, please. Shh. I am awake, please. <laughs> See. What enthusiasm you show in the first class? Everybody jumping and writing. Although but chappayana chapter, direct quote, indirect quote, I am teaching. Yes or no? No. I am now teaching bond concepts here. That's what I am saying now. I know that as the portion progresses, it may be getting what? Overloaded. Two things happen, sir. 
Whenever I start a new chapter, full attendance, not, that is now full attendance as a batch processor, full attendance. What is that? The inquisitive and comes attend. Okay. But the same chapter goes more than three classes, then they wait for the next chapter. So, like that, because that chapter has got so many concepts inside it or not. So, always don't try to expect new things and get entered in India. Always try to do everything and derive satisfaction. Are you following? I have seen persons, they don't like doing routine things, okay, house itself, they will be waiting to take bath, because whether before taking bath, any new thing that entertains him, whether it is there or not, be looking here and there, so they will be waiting for bath, some even don't brush their teeth, okay, morning, okay, they wait for routine things, now. people don't like to, because every day, new new things they want to do, but Life 90% uh, routine thing only, yes or no? 10% only is what? Uh, new. Even sleep routine only, right or not? No. <laughs> the shouting also routine, that you are getting interested, okay now. That amuses me, can you ever see? Now, see. Now, you are buying the bond, huh? You From this bond, you get how much rupees? 10 rupees coupon for 4 years. Fourth year, you don't get cash, you get what? Shares. How many shares you get? 30 shares. Each time, what? How much it is? Don't say 4.15 because 4.15 is the value of the 30 shares today. I am not going to get the 30 shares today. I am going to get it what? The fourth year. At some price at the end of fourth year. Are you following what I am saying? That means I don't know the redemption value because to know the redemption value, I should know the share price. Are you following what I am saying? I will assume the redemption value to be X. Can I proceed? No. How much I want as IRR? 12%. I discounted the YTM. I discounted the YTM. So it is 12% 4 years annuity factor. Calculator. 1 divided by 1.12 is equal to is equal to 4 times GT. What the number? 3.0373. 12% 4 years present value factor. 1 divided by 1.12 is equal to 4 times 0.6355. If you multiply 10 into 3.0373 gives you 30.37 and x into 0.65 gives you 0.6355x. The bond value today should be 30.37 plus 0.6355x. Yes or no? No. If I discount a bond cash flow using YTM, I should get the bond price. Yes sir. Yes or no? What is the price of the bond here? Present value of the future cash flow discount as the required yield. Yes or no? If you discount at 12%, we are getting the bond price today or not? Now this 30.37 plus 0.655x should be is equal to how much rupees? 142. 140 is equal to 30.37 plus 0.655x. If I rearrange it, I will be getting x as 175.66. That means, very simple. If I buy the bond today at how much rupees? 142. And the bond gives me 10 rupees, 10 rupees, 10 rupees, 10 rupees, how many years? 4 years. And also I get a redemption value, how much rupees? 175.66. Then only I will be earning a 12% waiting from this bond. Yes or no? You know, with coupon alone, I can earn only 10%. Yes, 10% coupon will give me only 10% YTM. Yeah, YTM of 12% can be achieved. Only when I have a redemption value, how much rupees? 175.66. Everybody following or not? Now, next. So, 175.66 redemption value I want means, it is going to be redeemed through how many shares? 30 shares. So that means what should be the share price at the end of the fourth year? 5.86. Today the share price is 4.15. It should grow to how much base? 5.86. Only if it grows to 5.86, I will be achieving a redemption value of 175.66. Only when I get a redemption value of 175.66, I will be able to achieve a return of 12% from the bond instrument. That's not yes or no. So the share price from 4.15 today should grow or should remain stable, should grow, should grow to how much of base? 5.86 is the issue, respond yes or no, now we have to find out the growth growth in the share price or not, tell me what the formula for calculating the share price growth here, ok now I will just do it other way, simpler way, tell me growth in share price. Tell me the formula, future value is equal to what? Present value into 1 plus R power N. Right or not? Now, 
Today the share price is 4.15. It is going to grow at a growth rate of G percent. How many years? 4 years. To become how much rupees? 5.86. I hope you are all following or not? Now, rearrange. 1 plus G power 4 is equal to 5.86 divided by 4.15. Tell me what is 1 plus G power 4? Tell me the number. 1.41. 2 0 okay 1 plus g is equal to 4th root of 1.1.4120 1. 1. 1. is it how much m 1.09 g is equal to how much 0. 0.09 or how much percent that means the share price should grow at how much percent 9 percent for the investor to achieve an yield of 12 percent respond are you all following what i am saying have you found the solution up to this or not now please copy the slides Step 1. Target redemption value. Stop talking, please. Target redemption value for an YTM of Finish copying, huh? <coughs> Have you all finished copying or not? Those who not copy, raise your hand. Okay. Now, step two, target MPS, market price per share at the end of year four. Target market price per share at the end of year four. RV means redemption value. Redemption value is equal to number of shares into MPS in fourth year. Finish copying on. Can I proceed? Next.
Step 2 or step 3 or step 3. Required growth in share price. Step 3. Required growth in share price. Required growth in share price. Right. Future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r power n. Future value is equal to present value into 1 plus r power n. Present value into 1 plus r power n. 5.86 is equal to 4.15 into 1 plus g power 4. 5.86 is equal to 4.15 into 1 plus g power 4. 1 plus g power 4 is equal to 5.86 by 4.15. 1 plus g power 4 is equal to 5.86 divided by 4.15 is equal to 1.4120. 1 plus g power 4 is equal to 1.4120. 1, 1 plus g is equal to fourth root of 1.4120. 1 plus g is equal to fourth root of 1.4120 is equal to 1.09. G is equal to 0.09 or 9 percent. G is equal to 0.09 or 9 percent. Can you writing? The share price should grow at. The share price should grow at how much percent? 9 percent. The share price should grow at 9% for the bondholder to earn. The share price should grow at 9% for the bondholder to earn a return of for the bondholder to earn a return of how much percent? 12 percent. For the bondholder to earn a return of 12 percent. For the bondholder to earn a return of 12 percent. Listen here. I now go to the share market, pay how much rupees to buy the bond? 140 rupees to buy the bond. As soon as I purchase a convertible bond, I go to Tirupati. Why go to Tirupati? Put 1 rupee into the Hundial and pray to God that let the share price become how much rupees here? 5.86. At the end of what? Fourth year. Uncertain event. It's all no. no. Only when the share price touches 5.86 in the fourth year, I will be able to earn a yield of how much percent? 12 percent from this bond. Yes or no? Tell me. Is this 12 percent a certain yield, uncertain yield? <laughs> it is what? A uncertain yield. Are you following what I am saying? The yield itself is uncertain. Should I? I don't say realize yield uncertain. I said what? Yield to majority itself is what? Uncertain. Tell me what is a certain yield for this bond? 10% because even if the share becomes what? Worthless. Still on the mature I'll be having what? A redemption value in my hand. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, See, that 12% may be what? Uncertain. But the 10% is what? Certain. The convertible bond ensures me a return of 10%. Yes or no? At the same time, there is always a chance to earn more than 10 percent also, which depends on the share price. You know, suppose the share price becomes 8 rupees or 9 rupees, I will make a mega yield, which a normal bondholder will not be able to earn. Are you following? Yes, sir. In the not now. See, suppose this is a normal bond. This is what? Normal bond. Okay. Normal bond gives an yield to maturity. Is the deal certain or not? Yield to maturity of a normal bond is what? Certain. Suppose there is a normal bond. This is a normal bond having a face value of 1000. Redemption value of what? 1000. What the white team of the normal bond? 10%. Is a 10% certain? The 10% certain but the DNA's yield is uncertain. Right or not? Is a coupon paying bond here. Yeah, right or not? In that case, how much I am able to reinvest? There is an interest rate risk. Yes or no? That means a normal bond income is subjected to only one risk. Call us what? Interest rate risk. which affects my realized yield. But at least the yield is guaranteed. Yes or no? But when you go for a convertible bond, not only the yield is uncertain. Realized yield is uncertain. Also what is uncertain? Yield to maturity also is what? Uncertain. So this makes that much more riskier. But that risk is covered by a straight bond value, floor value. Hence we pay more premium for the convertible bond. Everybody, are you comfortable or not? Write down. Next. One more question is asked now. What is the one more question that is being asked? Implicit conversion premium. Write down. Implicit conversion premium. 
I forgot. Tell me the formula, right? Implicit conversion premium is equal to what? Please, today only we did, yesterday we did. Implicit conversion premium is equal to what? Convertible bond value minus conversion value. Right or not? Implicit conversion premium is equal to convertible bond value minus conversion value. Convertible bond value minus conversion value. Which is equal to what is the value of this convertible bond? Tell me the price here. 142. 142 in the convertible bond value minus what the conversion value 30 shares into 4.15. The stock value of the bond is yes or no? 30 shares into 4.15. 30 shares into 4.15 is equal to 142 minus what is 30 into 4.15 number? 142 minus. 124.5 okay 142 minus 124.5 142 minus 124.5 equals how much rupees 17.5 rupees is equal to 17.5 rupees 17.5 stop and answer me if I buy it as a share how much price should I pay to buy this 124.5 since I buy it as a convertible bond I have to pay how much rupees 142 I pay how much rupees extra 17.5 it is called as what conversion premium why this premium is paid here to protect my yield against the shares non-performance are you following what I am saying now if I buy the share if the price does not grow the share is non-performing share becomes worthless my wealth becomes zero is or not but if the share becomes worthless still this bond is what a straight bond give me 10 percent coupon for me it is guaranteeing a 10 percent return is or no when I buy a share it is not guaranteed that I'll be earning so much x percent as what return but when I buy a convertible bond I'm guaranteed money how much 10 percent they give you some much you 10 percent or not Insurance and some issue they say or not, they give a some issue of 10% or not. In that case, for that 10% only pay what? A premium of 14, 17.5 rupees. Everybody, are you following or not? In different angles, I am trying to make you understand the business sense of a convertible bond. Are you following up? Now, with this, we complete this particular sum. Can you move to the next problem or not? Now, take question number. Twenty-two. Take question number twenty-two. Please. Vishnu Limited issues partly convertible debentures for rupees six hundred. Carrying an interest rate of 10%, rupees 200 will get compulsorily converted into two equity shares of Vishnu Limited and year from now. The expected price per share of the company's equity and year from now would be rupees 150. The non convertible portion will be redeemed into two equal installments of 200 each at the end of 5 and 6 years respectively. What is the pre-tax rate of return earned by the debenture holder? What is the post-tax cost of convertible debenture to the company? Assume that tax rate of the company is 30% and the net price per share of the company would realize for the equity share and year after an year would be rupees 120 is the question. Go through the problem before you start with the solution. Please always make an effort to be agile and try to understand what the question is and the facts which are given there.
Shall I start on now? See, let us understand some issues before you go into this particular problem. Okay. Here, cash flow. Leave this sum. Let's have a basic discussion and then move on to this particular sum. Say, I am an investor, year zero, I invest 100 rupees in a bond. How much rupees I invest in a bond? 100 rupees. Suppose a four year bond, one to four years, I get 10 rupees. At the end of fourth year, I get back a redemption of 100 rupees. Everybody with me or not? Tell me. What is the YTM of this particular bond? What the YTM it is? 10 plus. Or the IRR of this particular cash flow structure is how much percent? 10 percent. You are discounted, discounted 10 percent, the 10 rupees and then 100 rupees. I will be getting the face value of 100 rupees. So the IRR is 10 percent. Everybody following or not? No. Next. Here cash flow. This is for the investor. Now, look at the company. You are the company. I am the investor. I invested 100 rupees. I got 10, 10, 10 rupees for 4 years. And 4 years, 100. So, I am earning how much return? 10 percent. Okay. Now, suppose you are the company. For you, year 0, that's an inflow outflow. Um, how much inflow? 100 rupees. 1 to 4 years, going to have an inflow outflow. Um, outflow. How much rupees? 10 rupees. 4, how much you going to have? 100 rupees as outflow. Tell me what is IR for this cash flow? Same 10 percent. Respond. Are you following or not? I am discussing point by point. I am discussing first point. Can I present or not? Now, see. For both, the IRR is what? 10 percent. I call this IRR as return on investment. You call the same IRR as cost of capital. Point number one. Yes or no? Because I am investing how much? 100 rupees for which uh, the inflows the return is giving you how much person IRR 10 percent I'm getting how much rupees 100 rupees capital for which the outflow the cost is how much percent 10 percent the same IRR for the investor is ROI for the company is what cost of capital what is return investment for the investor is cost of capital for the company what is yield to maturity for the investor can be the cost of capital for the company prima facie I'm discussing point number one are you falling or not? Yes, sir. First angle, are you able to understand or not? Now, very simple. If these cash flows are before tax, if these cash flows are before tax, the IRR, what I get is also what? Before tax IRR. That is, from a before tax cash flows, I can earn only a before tax return. I cannot earn an after tax return. Are you following what I am saying? So, the IRR or cost of capital will be before tax if the cash flows which are returned for calculating it is without the tax implication. Are you following or not? If I adjust the cash loss for tax, then what return or cost I arrive at by calculation will be called as what? After tax return or after tax cost of capital. Are you following? In the parade or not so? The needs of cash flows determines the needs of my return. Okay. If the cash flows are after tax, the return which I get also will be what? After tax. If the cash flows are before tax, that means the return is also what? Before tax. It should be having a tax effect to be adjusted. Are you following what I am saying? Same way. If the cash flows are after tax, the cost of capital also is what? After tax cost of capital. If the cash flows are before tax, the cost of capital is what? Before tax cost of capital. So whether the percentages before tax and after tax depends on what cash flow you use for calculating it is point number two I wanted to discuss everybody following on all. all this will be dictating as notes at the end of this sum can I proceed to the third part or not now see suppose this debenture is issued four years back how many years back four years back now I am the investor I am the investor I go to the stock market in the stock market, this bond is now trading at par value. You know, bond can trade at any value in the stock market. Instantly trading at what value? Par value. So, this 100 rupees is a market price today. Are you following or not? So, what do you do? I pay 100 rupees to another person who is selling me the bond and buy this bond and get all this cash flows from, from the company. Are you following or not? I am earning how much percent return? 10 percent return. Come to the company now. See, company will pay this coupon redemption. There is no doubt. Is company getting 100 rupees? Sir? No. Are you understanding my question or not? No. This is not a new bond issued. 
is the bond already in issue? A question put in that. Is the bond already in issue? And it has been issued, suppose, four years back. Now, four more years, that what? Maturity. In the market, it is trading how much rupees? 100 rupees. What happened is, I am an investor. There's another person. I pay him 100 rupees and buy the bond. It's not For me, the 100 rupees is physical outflow. And all these are going to be inflow, which I get from the company. This part, I don't have any doubt. But the doubt for me is, Company pays coupon and 100 rupees redemption. This is an actual outflow for the company. Yes or no? But today, in the secondary market, when the bond is trading at 100 rupees, is an inflow to the company. Yeah? Oh. You understand my question or not? No. The company had an inflow four years back. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes, is this the inflow to the company? Question arises now. Can you put it there? In that case, he is writing this under right or wrong. Is a question that is the next two question. Are you following? First of all, did you understand my question? Yes, sir. Again, I say, this bond is trading in the share market, sorry, in the stock market at how much rupees? 100 rupees. Mr. X buys a share from, uh, buys a bond from Mr. Y by paying how much rupees? 100 rupees. For Mr. X, the 100 rupees is an investment, physical investment. Yes or no? Yes, sir. But for the company, is it getting the 100 rupees? Huh? No. Because it is between the two parties where the money exchange hands, company is only in the primary market, it won't be having a secondary market inflows into it. Are you following what I am saying? The question is, now the question is, then how can now, that is to zero means what? Today, the 100 can be written as an inflow. This I am discussing because this sense should be understood throughout equity valuation, other valuation aspects. Are you following? Huh? Now, how to understand this is, Today, the company is enjoying capital. Yes, Four years back also, it was enjoying capital. Now also, it is enjoying capital because bond is not redeemed. Yes or no? <coughs> as long as I am enjoying capital, it is there with me. Yes or no? Yes, what capital I am enjoying? Question arises. It is not the book value capital. It is what? Market value capital I am enjoying. Are you following? Huh? Nobody should try to earn return on book value, everybody should try to earn return on what? Market value. The company is enjoying what capital? Market value capital. I will elaborate this. See, suppose the company wants to cancel the bond today. Company wants to what? Cancel the bond today. Wants to close this bond instrument. Would you follow or not? What you can do? You can go to the secondary market, buy its own bond. Get up. Isn't it correct? Huh? When you go to the secondary market to buy its own bond, can it buy it at the original issue price, or current market price, or current market price. Suppose it's trading today at how much rupees? Par, for example, okay. How to pay how much rupees? 100 rupees and cancel this bond. Yes or no? If I cancel this bond, all these cash flows can be avoided. Yes, sir. By not cancelling the bond, I save an outflow of today 100 rupees market price. Yes or no? The saved outflow is what? Deemed inflow. Yes, sir. At the same time, I am going to incur what? In the future years, 10, 10 rupees for 4 years and 4, 3, 100 rupees. One way of understanding it. Put it up. Yes, sir. Should I repeat? Yes, sir. Should I repeat? Now, at least father say yes. Or under should mean father say yes. Don't sit like this. It is a heart burning. Please, energetic. I am teaching for you. Get up. Now, see, tell me. Again, should I repeat or not? Yes, sir. Okay, I will repeat. Yes, yes, yes. Shall I proceed? Now, see, today in the bond market, the bond is selling at how much base? 100 rupees. I am the company X Limited. I want to close this bond. I want to close this bond. Today, what I will do? I will pay 100 rupees, purchase my own bond. Right yes, I will pay 100, purchase my own bond. That means today, I spend 100 rupees or not? Yes, sir. If I spend that 100 rupees, what the benefit? I can avoid this 10 rupees coupon for 4 years. 100 rupees redemption for what? 4th year. That is the use of paying this 100 rupees today. Right or not? This is one way of understanding it. Now, by not redeeming today, understand, by not redeeming today, I avoid the payment of 100 rupees or not? Yes, sir. Isn't correct? I avoid the payment of 100 rupees. And avoided payment is a deemed inflow. Yes, sir. 
I don't know. I have to pay you 100. I avoid the 100 rupees payment. The money is in my pocket or not. It's deemed inflow. So why this inflow, for this inflow, I have to suffer something or not. What I suffer? By avoiding the 100 rupees market price payment today, I am forced to pay what? 10 rupees for 4 years and 100 rupees end of what? 4th year. This is the cost for enjoying a market value of capital today. Put it up. Is the cost of enjoying what? Market value of capital today. That means the cost of this capital is how much percent? Ten percent. Everybody following or not? So in our subject, whenever you use the word capital, I don't use the word book value capital. Always the word capital means what? We will never respect balance sheet of any company. REL fund, what is it? Balance sheet is only to know the names, what are all the items there, but the value will be de determining what? Differently. We always believe in what value? Market value of capital. Point number one. Yes or no? Now, I'll also say another reason why the cost of capital should be market value. Understand one thing. We have discussed in IPCC itself is cost of capital, the minimum return as you turn on any project. Yes, sir. yes or no? That is, if they want 10%, I should earn at least what? 10%. If they earn more or less, I'll not satisfy them. Everybody following or not? Now, see. Whenever I say capital, why I say market value? I'll tell you an example. I bought a house, for example, in the year 1981. I bought a house in the year 1981, say in Mailapu, for 20,000 rupees. How much rupees is yeah? 20,000 rupees, I bought the house. Understood? Now, and at that time, I was earning, I wanted a return of 10% from the rental income of that house. How much, how much percent? 10%. Or even 5%. Rental income may not be 10%. 5% from the house. Okay. 10,000 rupees into how much percent? 5%. I wanted to earn 500 rupees in from the house. Yes or no? Yes, Any issue? Yes, now, I continue to want that 5% rent from the house. Today also, my book value of the house is 10,000. Yes, my book value is what? 10,000. Can I say, I want to earn 5% on my book value, 5% of 10,000, that's not 500 rupees rent. No. Auto charge 500 rupees, that's all no. In that case, when I want to apply the required return, I don't apply on book value because the value has become meaningless. Yeah, today the house may be 10 crore rupees. Are you following what I'm saying? In that case, at least then what? 50 lakh rupees rent divided by 12, it may be a big bungalow. Everybody follow what I am saying. So, whenever you speak about return, it is useless to calculate ROI using a balance sheet value because it is history, yeah, right or not? Because my money blocked inside this house, I'll never say 10,000. Suppose somebody asks you, your money is blocked in the house or not? How much money blocked in the house means only a fool will say 10,000 block. Right? Because today the house is worth how much? 10 crore. If I sell that house, I can earn return on 10 crores, not on 10,000. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That means, whenever I say an asset should fetch a return, that means the money blocked in the asset is not the amount I paid to buy the asset, is the amount that is blocked in the asset, is the current value of the asset. Are you all following or not? And the current value of the asset depends on the present value of the future cash flow. That's for the value to determine. But what I'm saying is always the investment's return should be aimed to be earned not on the historical cost, but on what? The market value. Everybody, are you following what I'm saying? So from now on, whereas in our subject, whenever I say value, you should not look at balance sheet. We will not respect that. There is history. Yes or no? We are discussing about future. We are discussing about what? Future. History is only for post-mortem. Future only is for what? Decision making. So balance sheet, if you look at asset and liability, I'll only look at the alphabets. I will never look at what? Numbers because we should find the numbers. Are you following what I'm The numbers is what? Market value. Everybody, are you following or not? So that is also I wanted to highlight because I want always to have a wavelength set. When I speak in share valuation and all, I always use what? Market price. Mr. Sir, I bought the share at 10 rupees. Why you calculate return on what? 20 or 30 rupees. Because I always calculate my decay return not on book price, but on what? Market price. This is what I wanted to highlight here. Everybody following or not? Now, I took this sum as an opportunity to explain all this concept. We'll do this sum and then come back to this as a notes. Okay. Three points I discussed. What are three points here? Point number one is what? What is return on investment for the investor can be called as cost of capital for the company. Investor buys a bond at 100 and gets the coupons. Company gets that 100 and pays the coupon. This is investment, this is capital, this is return, this is cost. This is return on investment, it is cost of capital. And both are IRRs. Are you following what I am saying? Number two is 
what the, that is uh, this is what market value suppose i mean it's going to be market value and this is also what market value we also saw how the market value can become what capital for the company because by not redeeming today it is saving an outflow of the market price that becomes a deemed inflow second point i discussed third point as i said is the return on investment or cost of capital is pre-tax if the cash flows used or pre-tax is post-tax if the cash flows used or post-tax are the three points i discussed everybody is or no there's one more point pending that's point number four which i can i'll be able to highlight only at the end of the current problem everybody following or not now understand that in this subject concepts are very simple again again i say you are coming to the class here not to solve a problem understand always you are coming to the class not to solve a problem problem solution is one of the Work only we are doing, mainly we are here to get the wavelength set for what? The subject. The language should be spoken, okay? Yield, return, how I speak, the language is very important. The sense in which the number should be understood also is what? Very important. The wavelength of the business should be understood. It may seem to be more theoretical, which I am discussing. I am not discussing theoretical. I am only developing a vocabulary and a sense for the given subject. Are you following or not? Like this only through the session it what works out. Portfolio, any chapter. Only if you read that way, that chapter, when you read a question, you will not feel uncomfortable. Are you following? Always, uh, FM question when a student reads, sir, question very vague. I am not able to understand it. And discomfort comes uh, of the vagueness of the question. The reason is, uh, we learn this as a purely a problem subject. Are you following? Not? Don't learn this as a problem subject. Understand this as a business subject. That is, a, a business sense should be what understood. Everything is not in black and white. Either this or that. Everything sometimes needs what? Interpretation, understanding also. Are you following? Not? I am saying this again and again because more than the numbers I do, the notes I dictate is what? Very, very important for this subject. Can I start or not? Now, and this what I discuss is an IPCC portion. You're going to say all of that in IPCC, same thing is that in what? Final. We discuss in a different heading, that's all. Cost of capital in IPCC only now become what? Bond valuation final. Any account about? Now, write down. Next. Take question number 20. Okay, 22. So, I think I have given you time to read this question. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Now, see. Debenture has been issued. Normal debenture are convertible. Convertible. But not fully, but only what? Partially. That is the remaining is going to be renamed by giving cash only. What is the value of the debenture? 600. It is a face value, 600. Now, what the interest is carrying? 10%. It is going to be redeemed in three parts. How many parts? Three parts. First year, they will redeem 200. Fifth year, they redeem another 200. On the last year, sixth year, they redeem what? Another 200. 600 rupees debenture is now issued for six years. Even the company has promised to redeem in three lots or three tranches. First is what? 200 in first year. Another 200 in fifth year. And last 200 in sixth year. Yes or no? But in these three redemption, one redemption is not by cash, is by giving what? Shares. Which is the redemption? First redemption, the 200 will be compulsorily converted. No option for the bondholder and he cannot exercise at any time. It is not a normal convertible bond. It is to be compulsorily converted into how many shares? Two shares at the end of the first year. Yes or no? That is at the end of the first year, instead of giving them 200 rupees, they are going to give what? Two shares of the company. Yes or no? Then the bond face value become how much rupees 400 rupees and they'll be redeeming it at the end of the fifth year sixth year by paying 200 200 rupees respond is on noon and now we estimate you just do a projection you do a estimation that the share price and year from now is likely to be how much rupees 150 in our subject you should not be afraid about projection because projection the base data for us is on we are dealing with the future so we estimate the share price or project the share price to be how much rupees 150 at the end of the second year or the end of the first year and the remaining are all given now the question is find out the pre-tax return earned by the debenture holder what is the return earned by the debenture holder? Definition. IRR of the debenture cash flows. Yes, sir. What is the return earned on investment? Return on investment, what is the formula? 
IRR or the investment. Accounting ROI is very simple. Return divided by investment. That's non-compounded return. ROI is what I say. Whenever I say return, I always mean what? Reinvested or compounded return. The compounded return on investment is something but what? IRR of the investment. Yes or no? For the IRR, I should know right? The convertible bond cash flows or not? Can we start now? Now we are answering this question from a bondholder point of view or the company's point of view. Bondholder points of view. He pays today how much rupee? 600 rupee. And he's going to get the inflows in the future year. Let's start writing the cash flows and then calculate the IRR. Everybody, can we start or not? No. I'll start doing the solution. You participate, then you can just copy it. From debenture holders' viewpoint. Or better you can copy because no need to waste time in copying once again. Okay, write down. I can save some time. Part A. Yield from debenture holders point of view. 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 Okay. Now, have the following columns. Year, even, cash flow. Leave some space to write because we write the present value factor and then what? Discounted cash flow. We come back to that later. Let's first write the cash flows now. First, have the three columns. Leave some space to the right to fill up the remaining numbers. Yield, sorry, years, events and then cash flows. Okay. I buy the bond today at how much I pay? 600. That you leave it at the price. Can I see? Now, when I pay 600 and buy the bond today, what I get from the bond? First year. Right? Year 1, I get a coupon. First year, I get a coupon. Everybody participate. What is the coupon rate for this bond? 10%. And how much I pay? 600. How much I get as coupon? 60. 10% of 600, the coupon is 60. Okay. In the same first year, I get redemption or not? Partial redemption take place or not? In the first year, I get two equity shares. In the first year, I get two equity shares. Okay. Am I getting cash or shares? Yes. Is there any cash flow? No. Yes. Because every share is for how much of base? 150 rupees. I can immediately, if I want, sell it in the market for how much rupees? 300 rupees. So, by getting a share, I'm as good as getting a deemed inflow. How much rupees? Yeah? One minute. Instead of giving cash, they gave shares worth what? 300. It is your choice to convert into what? Uh, shares of a rupee, a cash of rupees? 300. Respond. Are you following or not? So, tell me, what is the number of shares? Uh, two shares. For the matter, two shares into 150 gives you 300. Gives you 300. Tell me. This number is certain or uncertain. <laughs> that is why it is a convertible debenture. Yes or no? Even if the share becomes what? Worthless. Still, I will be having what? Some assured cash flows. Are you following or not? No. In that case, 2 into 150 gives you 300. Can I go to the next part? No. First year I got a coupon. I got what? 2 shares. At the end of the first year? No. no. Next year is 2 to which year? 5 years. 2 to 5 years. I am going to get coupons. 2 to 5 years, I am going to get coupons. They pay me 10 percent coupon and 600 or 400 or 400. Already they redeem how much? 200. Don't say minus 300 because they redeem the 200 rupees. Depends on paying what? 300 rupees. What's that? There's a different issue. How much the redemption value taking place? 200. The face value outstanding is how much? 400 into 10 percent. 10 percent into 400. What is the coupons? 40. Coupon is 40. This 2 to 5 years is a singular annuity, a perpetuity, multiple annual annuity. Annuity normal, due, mid annuity. Yeah. It is a mid annuity. Respond, yes or no? Now, next, year 5. What is year 5? Partial redemption. Year 5, partial redemption. 200 rupees. Year 5, partial redemption. 200 rupees. Year 6. Tell me what I get in year 6? Coupon. Year 6, coupon. I get coupon on 600, 400, 200. 200. So 10% of 220. Year 6 coupon, 10% of 220. 10% of 200 is 20. Year 6, next is what? 
the final redemption. Yes, it's the final redemption. It is 200. Final redemption, it is 200. Stop writing. Everybody falling or not? No. The return from this bond is the IRR of this cash flows. Please, yes or no? That is, at some interest rate, at what interest rate? Some interest rate, if I discount these cash flows, the discounted cash flow should be equal to dash. Alert. Again, are you listening to my words? Sir? Now, see. At some interest rate, when I discount these cash flows, at some interest rate, when I discount these cash flows, the discounted cash inflow should be equal to what? The bond price should be equal to what? The bond price. How much is base? Yeah, 600. There should be some interest rate at which the discounted cash flow should be equal to 600. That interest rate only we call as IRR or white team of the bond to the bondholder. Respond, are you following? Huh? Now, this is an IRR for single or annuity or perpetual multiple and even multiple and even. Because it is not a say single, neither annuity or purpose is going to be what? Multiple and even. Always multiple and even IRR is calculated using a guest rate. Are you following? Huh? But in the plain bonds and all, we have an opportunity to use the formula interest after tax plus amount is divided by average price. That rate was used as a guest rate for solving the question, right or not? Now, in that case, in this case, I cannot use this formula. The reason is the bond is not blocked for the six years. We are having redemption partially in what? Mid and all. The formula cannot be used. Everybody following up? Huh? Now, I'll say. For this, you need not worry. In examination, like this, the sum is given. Na, always exam problems will not require you to calculate PV factor. They will give you the respective PV factor and numbers. Are you following? Na? Now, suppose they are given this question and then say use PV factor 14% one number, 15% some number and given. Will I guess as 8%? Ah? No. They themselves are giving the answer that IRR is between what? 14% and 15%. Use that guess rate and what? Do it. Otherwise, it should be using only what method? Trial and error method. There are some books which use a concept called as fake annuity. It is also useless because it is not going to give me such a accuracy. So, this is a way of doing the solution. Can you proceed? Now, let us guess 15% as IRR. Let me guess the IRR is how much percent? 15%. Don't ask me why sir I took 15% because I know the answer. Can I say in examination they will be giving 14 or 15 some percentage. Use one of them as a guest rate. Can I say now what is the present value factor of a 15% one year calculator 1 divided by 1.15 is equal to 0 0.8696. Next is also 0 0.8696. How to find out annuity factor for 2 to 5 years? Annuity factor for 5 years as annuity factor for 1 year. That gives me 2.4826. Present value factor for 5th year, 6th year, 6th year. Just understand, uh, I just presume that you understand the calculations. So the discounted cash flow is 60 into 0 0.8696, 300 into 0 0.8696, 40 into 2.4826. 200.4972, 20 into 0.4323 and 200.4323. If I get 606.91, is this 606.91 bond price or not? No. It is. Uh, it should be how much rupees? 600 rupees. I allow you to uh, do the interpolation. I'll say the IRR is approximately how much percent? 15 percent. I am not here to calculate IRR. Can you do on your own or not? Now, please tell me. 606 is not the bond price, no. Then you should increase it to increase it or decrease it or decrease it. You make it as 600. For the discounted cash flow should reduce. For DCM to reduce, the PV factor should reduce. For the interest should what? Increase. So try it odd person, 16 person. Yeah, correct. Huh? The interest should increase. Again, I say, yeah, 606 should become what? 600. So, DCF should reduce. When DCF reduces, PV factor should reduce. For PV factor to reduce, interest should increase. So, I should try at 14 or 16 percent, 16 percent. IRR is between 15 and 16 percent. I say 15 percent approximately because my aim is not yet to calculate the accurate IRR, only convey the concept. Everybody falling or not, with this, we complete the solution to this particular part of the question. Can I proceed? Now, please tell me, you are buying what bond? You are buying convertible bond. Paying how much rupees? 
600 rupees. Why the company gave you first year a coupon of 60, second year two shares, which you feel is what the much rupees? 300. And two to five years, 40 coupon. Fifth year, 200 redemption. Sixth year, another 20 coupon. And sixth year, 200 redemption. These inflows, if I discount how much person around 15 person, I get the bond price. No, that means from this convertible bond, I'm earning a return. Now, how much person? 15 person. This 15 person is a return which I'm earning before paying tax. After paying tax, are before because the cash flows are all before tax cash flows. The return which I calculate also is what before tax return. Everybody, point number one, accept or not? Now, please copy this before you go for the next one. So, right, question number 22. And then copy this slide quickly. Oh, you are doing along with me, huh? no. All numbers finish copying up. Those are not copy raising, hand. Huh? Okay, super. Can I proceed? No. Okay. What about? Huh? What do you have to copy, huh? Okay. Now. PV factor and DCF. Please copy as fast as possible, please. Stop talking. Finish up, huh? No. See. For the Debenture holder, this 15% is pre-tax return on investment, right or not? Yes, the question is having another part, what other part? Post-tax cost of capital for the company. So I have to write the cash flow from the company's viewpoint and then calculate the IRR. But when I write the cash flows, I should write what cash flows? Cash flow after tax should be written because the question is post-tax cost of capital. Can you proceed? No. Before that, tell me the heading I gave for party. What the party heading? Yield to maturity of? Demand to hold that. In bracket right, pre-tax. In bracket right, what? Pre-tax. Stop talking. In bracket right, pre-tax. Okay. Cost of capital come company's viewpoint. Cost of capital from company's viewpoint. Bracket la post tax. Cost of capital from company's viewpoint. In bracket right, post tax. I am doing what the question is asking me. They are asking me to calculate pre tax for the investor, post tax for the company. I am doing so. Cost of capital for the company, post tax. Please. Can you start or not? Company now issues debenture and raises a capital of how much of it? 600. For this future years, we will be getting inflows or paying outflows? Paying outflows. Okay. Can I proceed? Now. Please. Okay. Cash flows. Year 1, the company has to pay coupon. Let's do it together. Year, year events and then cash flows. Year events and cash flows. Year 1. Year 1, the company pays coupon. The company pays coupon. Listen here. It pays how much percent interest? 10 percent interest. On the face value of 600. What the interest paid? 60 rupees. If it pays 60 rupees interest, it will debit or credit in PNL? Debit. Interest paid will be debited in PNL. When 60 is debited in PNL, profit is increasing or decreasing or decreasing. Profit decreases by 60 rupees. When profit decreases by 60 rupees, my tax will increase or decrease or decrease. I have a savings of tax of how much percent? 30 percent. 30 percent. 
13 percent of 60 i say how much tax 18 60 rupees interest paid 18 rupees what tax save the net interest i would have shown how much is 42 rupees yes or no so the word interest means interest after tax simply 60 into 1 minus tax rate any number if i multiply by 1 minus t i'll be getting what after tax even after tax number if i divide by 1 1 minus t i'll be getting the before tax everybody yes or no so it is going to be 60 into 70 percent because 100 rupees cash loan 30 goes for what tax and balance is 70 percent 42 only is the payment for the company company only expense only 42 Ma, can i proceed huh? now number two two equity shares it gives two equity shares okay is company giving cash uh, giving shares uh? Is it an outflow or not outflow? The question is not now. At the end of first year, Insta giving you 200. In that place, I'm giving how much? How many shares? Two shares. Very simple, yeah. I tear here one third of the bond. For example, okay, I tear what? One third of the bond certificate, tear it down, and give what? Two shares certificate. Right or not? That means the company is giving how many shares? Two shares. Is any cash paid? Huh? We should not say like that. The reason is, had these two shares given, been given to a third party, you would have raised a capital of some money. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, by not giving to a third party, but giving to what? Bondholder, does last an inflow or not? Yes, the last inflow is a deemed outflow. Accept it. You can say, you are the bondholder. If I give you two shares, uh, we'll shake and go. Yes or no? But if I give some other person what? Two shares. He give me money or not? By giving you the two shares, I lose what? A capital inflow. That is going to be what? A deemed outflow. Are you following what I am saying? Yes, so now tell me. Every share is worth how much rupees? Don't say 150. The answer is what? 120. Look at the last line. Last line. Assume the tax rate is 30. That no, in that they said and the company would realize for the equity i think i have to read the sentence or not last line for after a year would be how much is here 120 now see here i want to elaborate the last point i said three points are discussed introduction or not i want to elaborate the last point and then continue further stop writing listen important see what is cost of capital for the company i said is written investment for the bondholder right or not Ball owner earn 10 percent na company pays what 10 percent so ytm for the investor is cost of capital for the company prima facie asset it or not it is not always necessary that the bondholders ytm is what cost of capital for the company i'll give an example this is the example okay see you are the bondholder i give you two shares you will sell the share in primary or secondary market we are selling the share in secondary market for how much rupees? 150. For you, the worth of share is 150. Right or not? Yes, sir. But I am the company. For example, I want to issue a share. I want to issue a share means I cannot go to a secondary market and issue a share. I have to reserve it to a stock exchange and issue in what market? Primary market. What company can realize from a share issue is not equal to what an investor can realize from selling of the share. Are you following what I am saying? Because I am bound to issue at a price lower for two reasons. 150 rupees may be the worth of my share. But I will not issue the share at what? 150. To be safer side, to avoid what? Under subscription, etc. I may issue the share not at 150, at a price of 120 or 130. Are you following what I am saying? You may sell at 150 bigger. You may sell one or two shares for agreed buyer. Yes or no? But when they want to go to a public issue of share, I will not make public issue at the current market price. I'll at least price an amount lower than the current market price for me to have my issue successful. First issue. Are you following not? Another thing is, even if I price at 150, there is no guarantee that I will take home what? 150 because I will be having flotation cost or issue cost. Are you following what I am saying? So, what the shareholder gets by selling the share is not equal to what the company will get by what? Issuing the share. For you, the cash flow may be 150. For me, the cash flow is only what? 120. So, your IRR may be different and my IRR may be different. Everybody following? Huh? Please tell me yes or no. In that case, cost of capital for the company is almost equal to what? 
The IRR of the investor. That's all. It need not be exactly equal because of these issues. Everybody, are you following? Huh? Now, tell me two shares. The company is going to lose an inflow of 150, 120, 120. 2 into 120 gives you 240. 2 into 120 gives you 240. 2 into 120 gives you 240. Because the investor will be able to sell at 150, but the company, if it wants to issue the shares, can issue only at how much rupees? 120. Because of the primary market situation. Can you proceed? Now, same way. Year 2 to 5. Continue. Year 2 to 5. All of you. Year 2 to 5. What is that? Year 2 to 5. Coupon. Year 2 to 5 is coupon. Tell me, how much is coupon? 10%. And how much rupees? On 600 gives how much rupees? Uh, on 400 gives you 40 rupees. 40 into 70 percent, 28. Because 40 rupees of coupon before tax, I save 30 percent tax, after tax is 28. Year 5, not an issue, partial redemption. It is 200. Partial redemption, it is 200. Year 6, it is coupon. It is coupon. How much into how much? 20 into 7 percent. 20 into 7 percent is 14. Year 6, the final redemption. Year 6, the final redemption, 200. Year 6, the final redemption, 200. Everybody, can we proceed or not? No. We have to calculate IR or no? No. I know the answer, hence I do the guess rate correctly. So, present value factor at 9 percent. PV factor at, don't ask me where 9%, question paper will give you, believe me, answer, present value factor at 9%. We factor at 9%. 1 divided by 1.09, all of you do along with me, 1 divided by 1.09 is equal to 0.9174, is equal to 0 0.9174, 0 0.9174. Annuity factor for 2 to 5 years is 2.9723. It's a mid annuity factor 2.9723. Fifth year present value factor 0 0.6499. 0 0.6499. Sixth year it is 0 0.5963. 0 0.5963. Again sixth year 0 0.5963. Discounted cash flow. 42 into 0 0.9174. 38.53. 38.53. 240 into 0.9174, 220.18. Next, 28 into 2.9723, 83.22. 28 into 2.9723, 83.22. I think you are all doing along with me or not? No. 200 into 0.6499, 129.98. 129.98. 14 into 0.5963 is 8.35, is 8.35. 200 into 0.5963 is 119.26, 119.26. If I total, I get 599.52. 600, ah? 48 paise, leave it here. Yeah? 599.52, I will give you the 48 paise. How much pay? 600 rupees. Tell me. The IRR is how much percent? 9 percent. IRR is 9 percent. IRR is 9 percent. This 9 percent is return or cost? cost. It is cost of capital. Pre-tax or post-tax? Post -tax. It is after enjoying the tax yield wherever it is possible. Everybody understood or not? Write down. Next. The post-tax cost of capital to the company is the post-tax cost of capital to the company is 9%. The post-tax cost of capital to the company is 9%. To the company is 9%. Everybody, can I proceed or not? No. With this, we have completed this section called as convertible bonds. I think we did question number 22, 23, 24, 25 and then 26. Five sums are covered in the convertible bonds. I again say, whatever requirement for the examination I have covered for the convertible bond. 
convertible itself is a subject in itself where there are so many issues. We can issue, say, apply option valuation models and all to find out the conversion premium, etc. If I have time in the later stages, I'll just give an idea about that during the chapter derivatives options. Okay, now let's go to the next concept. Okay, so write notes. Point number one. Point number one. IRR IRR of bond cash flow IRR of the bond cash flow IRR of the bond cash flow is IRR of the bond cash flow is the YTM for the investor. IRR of the bond cash flow is the YTM for the investor. This you already know it now. Is the YTM for the investor and and what cost of capital for the company is YTM for the investor and cost of capital for the company and cost of capital for the company. Point number two, in this subject, in this subject, the word investment or capital, in this subject, the word investment or capital should always be understood as, in this subject, the word investment or capital should always be understood as should always be understood as what market value of investment or capital should always be understood as market value of investment or capital because because the investment made or capital enjoyed because the investment made or capital enjoyed is not the book value is not the book value but really the market value is not the book value but really the market value the investment made or capital employed is not really the book value but really the market value on that value only, full sum and continue, on that value only, on that value only, return should be expected, on that value only, return should be expected and cost should be paid. On that value only, return should be expected and cost should be paid. Return should be expected and cost should be paid. Or else, why not see a company giving dividend on the face value? Suppose face value 10 rupees. Company says, I'm giving 12% dividend. How much dividend gives you? 1.2 rupees. But the company share may be trading at 100 rupees. How much rupees is 100 rupees? In that case, it has really given only written 1.2% to the investor. Yes or no? Because when I buy the share today, I don't pay 10 rupees and buy. I pay how much rupees? 100 rupees. That means company has got the duty here on a capital of not 10. On the capital of what? 100. Then only the public can be satisfied. Yes or no? I cannot say my capital at 10 rupees. I'm earning what? 1 point. I'm giving 1.2 dividend. 12% great. Nobody can say because you gave 1.2 not on 10 but on what under bigger all your shareholders are now investing in what current market price the money block is current market price on that you should be earning everybody follow what i am saying so always return on the investment or the cost be earned on the market value point number two or three three <coughs> point number three if pre-tax cash flows are used if pre-tax cash flows are used to calculate the IRR, if pre-tax cash flows are used to calculate the IRR, if pre-tax cash flows are used to calculate the IRR, are used to calculate the IRR, then, 
then the return or cost calculated is then the return or cost calculated is pre-tax return or cost then the return or cost calculated is pre-tax return or cost pre-tax return or cost and vice versa and vice versa means what if post tax cash flows are used, it is called as what? Post tax return or cost. That you understand or not? And vice versa. Point number three or four? Four. It is not always necessary that it is not always necessary that white team of the investor should be it is not always necessary that White team of the investor should be, white team of the investor should be what? Cost of capital for the company. It is not always necessary that white team of the investor should be cost of capital to the company. White team of the investor should be cost of capital to the company. Full stop. In the above problem itself, In the above problem itself, the two equity shares are worth rupees 150 each. In the above problem itself, the two equity shares are worth rupees 150 each. The two equity shares are worth rupees 150 each to the investor. The two equity shares are worth rupees 150 each to the investor. In bracket la secondary market price. In bracket right secondary market price. That 150 will be quoted in the secondary market na secondary market price. Bracket close. But it's just worth only. Bracket close and right. But it is just worth only. It is just worth only how much base? 120 for the company. It is just worth only 120 for the company. In bracket. Primary market price. In bracket right, primary market price. Bracket right, primary market price. Are you all following these four points or not? With this, we complete the notes to this particular problem. Can you move to the next Asia? Now. Give the heading. Malkiel's theorem. Stop talking, please. Malkiel's theorem, comma, bond convexity, Malkiel's theorem, bond convexity, and other concepts. Malkiel's theorem, bond convexity and other concepts. Malkiel's theorem, bond convexity and other concepts. Okay, now we have to do three areas here. First of all, we had a formula Volatility is equal to duration by 1 plus YTM. Remember or not? How that formula is derived? We will be discussing in the first stage. We will be discussing about the derivation of that particular formula. Once we complete the derivation, why a derivation is to visualize what is a convexity. That's all. Okay. Then we will discuss about the convexity. In convexity itself, some imperfection will come. Okay. Why is such an imperfection arise as we we'll understand through the Malkiel theorem? Everybody following or not? So, I am now going to once again we know what is a volatility. Volatility is equal to what? Duration by 1 plus yt. How that number, how that particular formula came, let us understand that first and then go for the convexity and the Malkiel theorem. Can you proceed or not? Now, see. Before that, 
y is equal to x square okay y is equal to x square just a small test or explanation before you start school mathematics kada cpt or school yo okay now i want to do differentiation of this i want to do what differentiation we call as a derivatives we do the derivatives what to do dy by dx differentiating y with respect to x what happens here 2 will come down to the x power 2 minus 1 enna pa isano na is nothing but 2 into x power 1 is answer for this respond isano who said no don't be playful can you see now see dy by dx is equal to 2x is a differentiation right or not now another example y is equal to 1 by x square please y is equal to 1 by x square how can we write 1 by x square x power minus 2 x power minus 2 right or not in that case what is dy by dx is equal to minus 2 into x power minus 2 minus 1 is equal to what minus 2 into x power minus 3 is equal to what minus 2 divided by x cube everybody are you following or not that's how one had to find out the differentiation right or not now another example y is equal to 2x plus 5000 y is equal to 2x plus 5000 give me x power 1 dy by dx is equal to 1 x power 1 minus 1 is what 0 2 and this 5000 is 5000 into 1 it becomes what 0 but differentiate a constant becomes what 0 so this is going to be dy by dx is equal to 2 is the meaning everybody yes or no now please now everybody are you comfortable about differentiating any function or not how to differentiate a function are you following or not no very simple what do you mean by this particular differentiation what is this dy by dx for example take the third example easy to understand okay see for example variable cost is 2 rupees per unit can i have it or not x is number of units fixed cost is 5000 suppose i produce 1000 units how many units here 1000 units what is my cost 2 into 1000 2000 plus 5000 my total cost is 7000 agreed or not everybody are you with me or not now so that means when i produce 1000 units the y the cost is how much to be 7000 Suppose I produce 1500 units, how many units? 1500 units. So, what is the cost? 2 into 1500 gives you 3000. By the way, how much the base? 8000. Everybody, yes or no? That means when the units increases by 500, the cost increases by 1000. So, the cost increases two times the units increase, yes or no? That means x is units and y is what? Cost. The change in cost with respect to what? The change in units is 2 in this particular case. Are you all following what I am saying? That means differential calculus or differentiation tries to find the rate of change. Try to find what? Rate of change of a dependent variable over the independent variable. Are you all following what I am saying? So why is called as dependent variable? Because its value depends on what? The independent variable x. For the given change in x, how much the y changes is what we call as a differential calculus. It measures the change. It measures what? Change. The rate of change is measured by what? The differentiation. That are you following on? Now, volatility is change in price with respect to what? Yield. That's what I'm discussing here. Are you following what I'm saying? So, the differential calculus measures what? The rate of change. Everybody, I have the clarity here now. Now, here, when x changes, y changes how many times? 2x time here the change is not a constant the change itself is a function are you following what i am saying yes, sir. the change is not a constant change is what yes, sir. here when x changes always a y changes by what 2 the equation is a function but the change is a constant if equation is not a function equation is a constant no change 
if equation is constant, whatever may happen to x, y will not change. Are you following what I am saying? In that case, if equation is a constant, the first derivative is not at all a change. Are you following what I am saying? Now, um, but the first derivative is what? A constant here. Now, the derivative itself is what? Constant. The meaning is very simple here. y is equal to x square is a straight line. Huh? It is a curve. We know it is a parabola. Why is it like a parabola? So it is looking like this. Equation y is equal to what? x square. So y is equal to what? x square is a parabola. Can I push it or not? Down. See. Can I proceed? Now. If it is a straight line. Always the slope is constant. All the slope is what? Constant. And the differentiation is what? Constant. In parallel, what happens is the tangency now, that is, uh, tangency means when you draw a line, you touch only what? Once. This is a tangent for this point, and this will be a tangent for what? This point. Like that, there's a tangency happening, right or not? Now, this tangency is a straight line. Are you following? Uh? This is a original function is a curve. The original function is what? Curve. But uh, the change, you know, the point changes. No, the changed points, uh, I can find out. If I find a tangent line, are you following what I am saying? You know, tell me. There is a point here. There is a point here. Are you following what I am saying? How to find this point? If I find a tangency point for this curve in this place, I get this particular point. Yes or no? And how I can find this point? If I find a tangency point in this case, I will find this particular point. Are you understanding what I am saying? In that case, if I join the tangent, if I just have the tangencies, the tangencies form what? The tangency changes what? 2 x time. It becomes a straight line. Everybody following what I am saying? Since the original function is a curve, the derivative function cannot be a constant will become what an equation itself are you following what i'm saying in that case i don't say why when x is equal to 2 y is equal to 4 nobody can say because y is what 2x time will be the change in what y everybody follow what i'm saying so just to make you understand if you don't understand this leave it the school differentiation portion are you following huh? now what i want to convey is first derivative always indicates all indicates what change all indicates what change whether change is positive or negative will be indicated by the second derivative. Are you following what I am saying? First derivative always indicates what? Change. Okay. Now, we are discussing again and again the word change because volatility is change. Yes, volatility is what? Change. What is volatility? Change in bond price with respect to what? Yield change. That is what is volatility. You know, it should be a first derivative of the price with respect to yield. Are you following what I am saying? That is why I want to discuss about the volatility. Now, now, even if you don't understand this parabola and all, have you understood this particular first three calculations or not? Y is equal to x square means 2x is the first derivative. Y is equal to 1 by x square means what? Minus 2 by x cube. Because it becomes minus 2, no? Minus 2 by minus 2 minus 1 becomes what? x cube and so on. Now, you should be finding out the first derivative. In, in, everybody, can I proceed or not? Now, see. Okay, whatever I am discussing now, you need not copy. I will give you the typed, say, notes for this in the next class because not required for the problem solving, only for the understanding purpose. Is like an appendix to this chapter I am discussing, that's all. Okay, so I will give you the typed notes in the next class. First, just participate, understand more than enough for the discussion part. Can you start or not? Now, first, see. I will write D means duration of a bond. Don't talk. Duration of a bond. Y means yield to maturity. Y means what? Yield to maturity. C means coupon. The word C means what? Coupon. And MV means maturity value. The word MV means what? Maturity value. These are the terms I am going to use. Can I start or not? Now, C. First of all, duration of a bond. Forget about my writing here. How you calculate duration in table approach? Tell me. I write the bond cash flows which are C1, C2, C3, C4, NES coupon and N3 are what? Redemption. Those items you discount by what? Yield to maturity. What is the discounting factor? 1 by 1 plus Y power N. Anybody saw no? 
1 by 1 plus R power N is a present value factor or not. So, I write the cash flows. I discount using what? Yield to maturity. 1 by 1 plus Y power N. I use for discounting. I get what? Discounted cash flow. Every discounted cash flow, I divided by what? Bond price to get the proportion. The proportion multiplied by what? Yes. And I total it. I will be getting the duration. Respond. Yes or no? Are you visualizing it or not? Tell me. What I write first? Cash flows. Ah, yes, sir. over here. Yeah. What I write first? Yeah. Cash flows. Discount the cash flow using what? Yield to maturity. I get what? Discounted cash flow. Discounted cash flow by price. I get the proportion into years. I get the numbers. If I add, I get the duration. Accept it. Now, very simple. Can I say like this? First year proportion divided by price is 1P1 divided by P. Yes or no? And second year proportion is what? 2P, you know, P2 divided by P and 3P3 divided by P and so on. Is the first year proportion by its price? Oh, sorry, sorry. C is proportion, no? Sorry, sorry, it is. Discounted cash flow of first year by what? P plus discounted cash flow of what? Second year by what? P. Is the first year proportion? This is what? Second year proportion and so on. I will be writing it. Are you following or not? In this, I multiply by what? Year. 1, 2, etc. Everybody following or not? Now, in that case, all places, P common or not? Yes. I can write P as one denominator. I can say 1 into discounted cash flow for first year plus 2 into discounted cash flow for second year up to plus n into discounted cash flow for n year whole divided by p will be giving me the value of duration should i repeat or can i proceed okay. okay because discounted cash flow by price or the first year gives me first year proportion into year one is one p one yes or no discounted cash flow for second year divided by price gives you what second year proportion into two years and so on i get the duration p is common denominator or not yes sir. nothing but one dcf1 plus two dcf2 and so on gives me the duration up to this are you following up now let us go for elaborate discussion now duration is equal to all of you participate first year i get c1 as coupon one c1 divided by 1 plus y power 1. 1 C1 divided by 1 plus y power 1. C1 by 1 plus y power 1 gives you what? Discounted coupon into first year. Yes or no? Plus, tell me the next item. 2 C2 divided by 1 plus y power 2. Like that it goes. Last you are going to have what? N into cn plus maturity value last year alone no coupon alone also get what maturity value divided by 1 plus y power m the whole divided by p will give me the duration point number one accept or not yes, you know this is discounted cash flow one into one plus discounted cash flow two into two like that discounted cash flow for n tier into n gives you what uh, the numerator divided by price gives you the duration i have written this already everybody accept or not now nah. so this is called as duration i'll keep this in hand i'll bring this term in the calculation in the later stage so tell me are you understanding the duration calculation or not now nah. tell me what is duration what is duration Okay, what is duration? Calculation, yeah. 1 C1 divided by 1 plus y power 1 plus 2 C2 divided by 1 plus y power 2. So on up to what? N. Cn plus maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n. Whole divided by price gives you the duration. That's all no. Now, in that case, very simple. It is first year discounted cash flow divided by price gives you what first year proportion into one second year discounted cash flow divided by what price gives you a second year proportion into two and last year discounted cash flow divided by price gives you discounted as a proportion for last year into n year that gives you a duration table method only i written in form of notation that's all everybody accept or not now you keep this in mind can i put the next stage or not now see Right here. Price of a bond is the present value of the bond cash flow. What is the value of a bond here? Present value of the bond cash flows discounted at YTM. Now tell me what are all the bond cash flows? C1 by 
1 plus y power 1. Tell me next is what? C2 by 1 plus y power 2 up to last year what? I receive coupon and what? Maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n. He is going to give you the price of the bond. Get over. Because the value of the bond is first year cash flow is coupon 1 discounted by first year discount rate. Coupon 2 divided by second discount rate. Discount rate is 1 plus r power n. Yes or no? So the value of the bond is the present value of the future coupons and redemption value. Gives you the value of price of the bond today. Respond. Yes or no? My question is. These coupons and maturity value are variable and constant. Constant because they already agreed at the time of bond Indian jari. These numbers will never change, will never want to change. But white team can change or not? Today the market may want 10%. Yeah. Tomorrow the same market may ask what? 12%. Due to which only the price moves up and down. Yes or no? Why the bond price moves up and down? Due to coupon or due to yield? Coupon will remain always the same. The bond price moves up and down only due to what yield. So the influencing variable is not coupons and redemption. The influencing variable is what yield to maturity. So I want to know how much a price changes due to what yield change that I can find out through the differentiation. Are you following what I am saying? So now what I do is I differentiate the price with respect to what yield dp by dy. Are you following? Huh? Please respond yes or no dp by dy. Listening, huh? Now, in that case, very simple. This minus 1, huh? what happens here? It is minus 1C1 divided by 1 plus y power 2. Now, minus 1, minus 1 becomes what? 2. In the S or no? Now, I want somebody to tell me, this is minus 2, now what happens here? Plus minus 2C2 divided by 1 plus y power 3. Plus, and so on, tell me, plus, this becomes what? Minus n cn plus maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n n plus 1 it's 1 plus y power n plus 1 everybody agreed or not now i just differentiated this price with respect to what yield all the daughter minus 1 no minus 1 into c1 becomes what minus 1 c1 divided by 1 plus y power minus 1 minus 1 becomes what minus 2 this minus 2 becomes what minus 2 c2 divided by 1 plus y power minus 3 and so on minus n cn plus m e divided by 1 plus y uh, y power n plus 1 is a first derivative everybody accept it or not now Please follow here. What I do is dp by dy is equal to I take minus 1 by 1 plus y outside. I take what? Minus 1 by 1, by 1 plus y outside into what happens? It becomes what? C1 by 1 plus y power 1. Cut up. Isn't it correct? Huh? Now 1 plus y take outside becomes what? 1 plus y power 1 plus what? Plus 2C2. Can write as 1C1 is C1 or 2C2 divided by what? 1 plus y power 2. Plus what happens here? N Cn plus maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n. Is a rearranged formula. Respond yes or no? Yes sir. Now what I do is I bring the dy that side. I bring the dy that side. Can I proceed or not? Now, if I take that side, can I say like this? dp is equal to same thing. Minus 1 by what? 1 plus y into c1 by 1 plus y power 1 plus what? 2c2 by 1 plus y power 2 up to what? n cn plus maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n into what uh, dy i bring the dy that side everybody respond yes or no can i proceed now i will divide the left hand side and right hand side by what price i'll divide left hand side right hand side by what price now in that case i'll write it here i'll write dp by p you know the left hand side is what dp i write dp by p yes or no now the entire term i'm going to rewrite once again and divide it by price in the right or not in that case can you tell me if you all remember tell me what is the right hand side here minus 1 by 1 plus y into c1 by 1 plus y power 1 plus what 2 c2 by 1 plus y power 2 plus n c n plus maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n 
into dy whole divided by p. Enna pa right or not? Na. See, I can say like this. dp by p is equal to minus 1 by 1 plus y. Now, tell me. This entire term divided by p, 1c1 by 1 plus y plus 2c2 by 1 plus y squared, everything divided by what? p is what we wrote here as duration. Enna pa, right or not? So, what happens? It becomes minus 1 by 1, by 1 plus y into this middle by written as what? Duration into dy. Into dy. Yes or no? No. DP is what change in price and P is what price. For example, price is 100, change in price is 2 rupees. So, what a percentage change in price? 2 by 100, 2 percent. Yes or no? That means DP by P can be called as percentage change in bond price. Is that what a percentage change in bond price is equal to minus D by 1 plus y into the change in yield. Yes or no? So, when the yield changes by, dy means what? Change in yield. When the yield changes by 3%, the bond price will change by minus d by 1 plus y into what? 3%. So much percentage. Everybody, yes or no? Now, this d by 1 plus y only, we call as what? Volatility and the dy is what? Change in YTM. When the YTM changes by dy percentage, the bond value changes by volatility time dy percentage. Gives a percentage change in the bond price. Everybody, are you following or not? So now, duration is not a separate item. There is only one other working note for calculating what? Volatility. Conveniently, I replace this number by a name called as what? Duration. The duration is nothing. That is why if I post in other books, does not say duration means average holding period. Nobody says. The simple is that duration means what? Weighted average duration of the bond cash flow discounted what? The YTM. Where the weights are the proportion of the discounted cash flow to the total cash flow. They never say this is the meaning of duration. Everybody follow not. Nobody can define the meaning of duration. Duration always defined as what? A formula. It is a very convenient way of replacing the number instead of volatility formula and finding it out. Yes or no? But that duration number has got some very useful interference. What can say? Interpretation where it is the optimum holding period, one can say it may be the average period in the money is blocked. All those are only our interpretation. Really, duration is not a concept, it is a calculation. Duration is not a concept, only what? A calculation. Simply the number has been substituted by a name called as duration. That's all. Everybody following or not? That is why when I define duration in the first class, I said duration is nothing but the weighted average duration of the bond day cash flows. Where but the discounted bond cash flows, discounted at YTM, where the y weights are what? Proportion of cash flows to the total bond price. Yes or no? I also said it can be understood as what? The average period for which the money is blocked, the optimum holding period, both are explained. And third, I said duration is a working note for what? Volatility is proved here once again. Everybody, yes or no? So this is what we call as the volatility of the bond. Now tell me, volatility of the bond depends on what? If it is not duration as well as what? YTM. Duration is nothing great. It is nothing but some the number depending on the coupon and then what? Uh, YTM of the bond instrument. Everybody following or not? So, with this we have derived the formula for the volatility of the bond. Everybody are you following or huh? Now, tell me. Zero coupon bond is there or not? So, uh, zero coupon bond. What is the duration of a zero coupon bond? Yeah. A duration, what is the duration of zero coupon bond? N years, yeah. You know, it is going to be the maturity, yes or no? Now, what is the price of the zero coupon bond? Price of the zero coupon bond is what? Maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n. In a power, right? Yes or no? I want to differentiate it. dp by dy is equal to minus n maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n plus 1. In a power, yes or no? Now, this can be written as minus 1 by 1 plus y into what? n maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n. I think you are all able to understand it or not? No. This is going to be dp by dy. I just go to the other side. What happens is dp is equal to minus 1 by 1 plus y into what? Into n maturity value divided by 1 plus y power n. 
into what uh, dy. Everybody, are you following what I am saying? So, in that case, what happens is, I divided by what? Price. Okay. Okay. In that case, uh, change in price is equal to minus 1 by 1 plus y into what is this n here? n means what? Duration into maturity value by 1 plus y per n is what? Price of the bond into dy. n up or right or not? See, maturity value by 1 plus y per n is what? Price of the bond minus 1 by y. n will be called as what? Duration is n years and maturity value by 1 plus y per n is what? The present value of the maturity value is the price of the bond. Yes or no? It is called as what? Price of the bond into dy. I bring the price this side. What I get is dp by what? P is equal to minus T by 1 plus Y into dy. For the change in yield, the price changes by minus T by 1 plus 1 times is the volatility of a zero coupon bond. Everybody follow or not with this, we understood the concept of volatility. No need to copy the derivation. I'll give you in the printed sheet in the next class. Everybody following or not? Now, to put it simply, what I wanted to convey you is, the volatility is nothing but the first derivative of the bond value. What about? Yeah, okay, now listen here. See, this is bond price. This is bond price. No. Bond is volatility. Simply, I differentiate this bond price once. I differentiate the bond price what? once. The first derivative of the bond price with respect to what? Yield. Everybody hear me or not? The first derivative of bond price with respect to yield will be called as what? Volatility of the bond. This bond is or no? And that is what we calculate as minus duration by 1 plus y. We calculate as volatility for a coupon bond as well as a zero coupon bond. That's all regarding the concept of volatility. Can I say, is this volatility perfect or imperfect? Perfect or imperfect? Or imperfect is what I'm going to discuss this. An adjustment made through convexity. Everybody following or not? No. See, I have a doubt. I'll... Yes. I'm not going to write once again, don't worry. Okay, now tell me. Price of a bond is equal to what? Present value of the bond cash flows. In the parade or not? Now. See, don't get too much confused. So, either price of the bond, no. What the bond cash flows? Coupon 1, discount by 1 plus y power 1. Coupon 2, discount by 1 plus y power 2. Like that. Last year coupon and matured value, discount by 1 plus y power n. Is the price of the bond? Yes or no? Answer my question. This price will change due to coupon or due to yield. Yeah. Now coupon will not change. I want to say how much a price changes for the given yield change. Other I want to find out. So change, how to find out rate of change? We find the first derivative of a function. I'll be knowing what? The rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to what? Independent variable. I already proved you that earlier. In the right or not? In that case, I did dp by dy. I did dp by dy. All this I did. You believe that what I did is correct. All this I did, I did, I did and did and I just got what? This particular calculation. Yes or no? So, I found out that dp by p, the change in price divided by what? Price gives you personal change in price, no? Is equal to, I got minus 1 by 1 plus y plus this entire term is substitute as what? Duration into dy. What is dy? Change in yield into Duration by 1 plus y is what? Change in, that is called as volatility. Volatility into change in yield. Suppose yield changes by 2%. The volatility is 3 times. So 3 into 2% is what? 6% will be the change in bond price. Respond, are you following or not? Now, sir, what is this minus don't? Worry because this minus indicates inverse change. Indicates what? Inverse change. If the second derivative is positive, then I am trying to minimize something. It is going to be inverse. Second derivative negative means what? It is going to be a maximizing. There is going to be a positive direction. Are you all following what I am saying? So, this is how you have to understand the volatility. Tell me, volatility is nothing but what? Change in percentage change in bond price with respect to the change in the yield to maturity is what they call as a volatility of the bond. You will understand clearly the concept of volatility or not? Okay. Now, why we are discussing is, my question is, bond price is a linear equation, huh? non-linear. Linear not to the power 1. Y is equal to mx plus 3 linear. Yes or no? 
y is equal to 2x plus 4 linear or non linear y is equal to 2x plus 4 linear non linear linear y is equal to 757.6 x plus 1000 linear non linear linear the x is always to the power 1 1 in the variable is to the power 1 it is always from a straight line it is called as linear response yes or no the bond price like x we have y yes or no? x we have what y and for y we have what price okay now tell me this bond price equation is a linear or non linear it is non because it is 1 plus y power 1, y power 2 and so on. It becomes what? A curve. It becomes what? A curve. It becomes a non-linear equation. Are you falling or not? Can you put it Now. See the problem. Now, for a curve, the second derivative will be, the first derivative will be an equation of constant. Y is equal to 2x, dy by dx is equal to 2. For a linear equation, the first derivative is a constant. Right? Y is equal to x square, then dy by dx is equal to what? 2x. The 2x is not a constant. The rate of change itself is a function. Are you following what I am saying? The rate of itself is what? Function. Okay. In that case, this dy by dx, that is a dp by b, this number is a function, uh, it is a constant uh, function because in the first derivative, the y is coming, is or no? Yes, if this y is absent, then the first derivative is what? Uh? Constant. If the 2x means what? x is coming, the derivative or not? If the dependent, the independent variable comes in the first derivative itself, then the, it becomes what? Uh, a function. Everybody, yes or no? Now, that means... When I say volatility as 3%, how much percent? 3%. I say when the yield changes by 1%, the bond price changes by 3%. Always I say, but the 3%, I am assuming as a constant or not. Correct? Now, suppose at 18%, this may be the volatility, yes or no? But at 18.1%, the volatility changes because. The volatility also depends on what? YTM. Yes. For example, duration is 4 years. What duration is? Yeah? 4 years. And YTM is 10%. So what is the volatility? 10 by 1 point. That is 4 by 1.1. 1. 1 gives you volatility. Yes or no? Yes, that volatility is true only for a small percentage point change from 10%. For example, 10.1%. It may be what? True. But when the yield changes to 11 percent it becomes what 11 percent then the duration is not four years now the y is what 10 percent then the volatility changes or not for the same bond the volatility changes with yield yes or no that means the volatility is true only for that particular level and the minute change it is not a constant it will be what a function everybody following now to understand it much better see this particular diagram okay now this is yield to maturity this is what price this is what price tell me as the white team increases the price increases or decreases or decreases so it should be a curve like this it should be a curve like this everybody are you falling or not no as the white team increases the price what decreases now in that case, is the decrease always 3% a constant slope? Huh? No. It is not a straight line to always say it is going to be what? A 3% constant slope. What happens is, we assume the volatile to be constant. Volatility 3 percent. I always say that when the price goes, the yield goes up by 1 percent, the bond price decreases how percent? 3 percent. By assuming a constant volatility, I make the bond price as a straight line. I make bond price as what? Straight line. By assuming a volatility as 3 percent simply, I make the bond price as what? Straight line. So, for example, if the yield increases by 2 percent, the price decreases by 6 percent, like that, I always seem to be what? Straight line. This is a real bond value and this is what uh, the bond value as per what volatility there's always a difference between this point and this point yes or no the gap only we call as what convexity if you adjust the gap from here you can bring it to what this curve and find the correct price of the bond are you following huh? yes, sir. Yes, sir. now very simple now i can say now the bond price is 100 rupees all the bond price is yeah? 100 rupees the yield drops by one percent one percent 
the current yield is 10 percent it becomes what 9 percent will the price increase or decrease uh, increase suppose the volatility is three times how many times here yeah? three times i say the price will increase by three percent yes or no that means the hundred bond expect to be what 103 the 103 will be sitting in this curve in the straight line uh, straight line because i see my constant slope three times that means uh, for the given ytm my price will be in this particular place but it should be what in this particular place normally because it is a curve yes or no now that's a different between the point on this curve and the point on the straight line not which is right point this is correct or this is correct or this is the correct price this is what wrong price how to connect it by adjusting for what convexity and be getting the correct price of the bond everybody following what i'm saying this is what we call as the convexity of a bond instrument this point is or no okay one last time summary and then we can just do a problem in the bond convexity at least i'll Give the example and do up to your states. We'll discuss convexity next class. Don't shout, yeah. Can I go see? Now, all of you keep your watch half an hour late. Okay, that is 8:30 only time now. Can I go see or not? Don't look at the watch. Khadar is soldering. Yeah. Can I go see? Listen, see. I will leave you in another five minutes. But I'll leave you in another five minutes. Believe me. See. Now, very simple x-axis y-axis yield to maturity and then what price of the bond answer my question when yield increases the price decreases straight line of curve curve it is 1 by 1 plus y power n is coming or not it is a curve so the yield price relationship will be a curve running like this everybody are you having the clarity or not now actually if the yield is say 10 percent and the price will be this price at 10 percent yield this is going to be the price are you following what i'm saying now if the yield is what uh, 15 percent what the yield is how much percent 15 percent the price will be what this i call as price one i call as what the uh, price two everybody yes or no so when yield increases by five percent the price decreases by so much is the answer for this are you following what i'm saying what i do in volatility is i calculate volatility as duration one by one plus y accept it Suppose I calculate as 3 percent, how much percent? 3 percent. I say that when the bond, when the yield increases by 1 percent, the price drops by 3 percent. When the yield decreases by 1 percent, the price increases by 3 percent. That means the 3 is a constant number, a function of. But really, the volatility is not constant. It is d by 1 plus y. I cannot say volatility is 3 times. Always the volatility is what? d by 1 plus y. When the y changes, the volatility changes. Yes or no? The volatility is volatile. Yes or no? The volatility is not constant. It is all what? Changes. By assuming the volatility is a constant, what I make as, I make the bond price as a linear equation. Right? I'm because when the volatility is constant, when first derivative is constant, the original function should be what? Linear. Is the original function linear or not? No, it is curvy linear. So what I do is by finding out bond price using volatility as a constant, I get your yeah, equation is going to be what? A straight line. Are you all following what I'm saying? Now you should know that by using volatility formula, if you find the bond price, my bond price for the given percentage will be here, it will be what? In this place, but the real bond price should be what? In this place, that's a different with this existing, yes or no? Why a different exists? Because I simplify the volatility to be what? Constant, in fact, it is itself what? A function only, that due to that what happens, an adjustment is required or not, that adjustment is made through, uh, through what? The convexity, everybody following or not? The convexity itself is what? Imperfect. How it is so? We'll discuss in the next class. Are you following? Huh? Now, I'm not leaving you. Copy the example and then I'll leave you. Okay? Now, please. One example. Yeah, copy this, I'll leave you. Convexity example. Please. All the other points still I discussed now. I'll give you in the next class as a printed notes. It'll take time to copy that. I don't know how much, how many of you understood differentiation also. Okay. Now, one minute. If a person has not understood anything now, leave it. No worry. They won't ask us in what? Examination. If you know how to do convexity, is more than in, say enough. Uh, I, because it will be more interesting if you know why it is being done. That's why it has been discussed. Can you say it? Now, convexity example. Pesa Coupon is equal to 10%. Understand that inside classroom, you don't have a fundamental right. Right to speech curbed. Can I proceed? No. Coupon 10%. <laughs> what 
YTM 10%. Don't laugh. Try to laugh also curb the YTM 10%. Try to look at time also not there. Okay, next bond value 1000. Okay, now tell me why the bond is trading at par? The movement is equal to YTM. Observation, that's all. Term is 5 years. Term is 5 years. Answer my question. Will the duration be 5 years or not 5 years? If the duration to be 5 years, it should be what bond? Zero coupon bond. Base coupon, it should be less than 5 years. I calculated it. Believe me, the duration is 4.17 years. Today, Homer, calculate the duration. Okay, duration is 4.17 years. How to calculate? Tell me 1 plus y by y minus 1 plus y plus t into c minus y divided by c into 1 plus y power t minus 1 plus y. Volatility is equal to duration by 1 plus y. Volatility is equal to duration by 1 plus y, which is equal to 4.17 by 1.1. 4.17 by 1.1 is equal to 3.791 percentage. 3.791 percentage. 3.791 percentage. What is the meaning of 3.791 percentage? When YTM changes by 1 percent, the bond price inversely changes by 3.791 percent. This formula, I assume the volatile to be constant. At all YTM is a 3.791. Nah? When I change the, when the YTM tomorrow becomes 11%, this will not be the volatility. Yes or no? It is not a constant because volatility itself depends on what? The YTM. That is a mistake we are making for the only convexity is adjusted. We will continue in the next class. Another, another one hour's time, I will complete and start with the dividend policy. Thank you friends. Om Sai Bojan Palli.